Hello everyone, this is me Arizio with a new video and in this video we are going to talk about how you can control or access your Raspberry Pi over the internet that means from anywhere using anywhere in the world without using port forwarding okay so now now as we know like using port forwarding controlling the Pi over the internet is pretty easy but the thing is that the port forwarding thing is not that easy because there are a lot of things like dynamic IP, static IP issues and like there is secure router is behind and it will not really work and there are a lot of issues so like many people like cannot do this port forwarding thing so that's why we are going to discuss today how you can actually access the raspberry pi ports over the internet without doing port forwarding now i already have made a video one year back using this topic and you guys have really liked that video now you can still use that technique to actually access the raspberry pi ports and the link of that video will be in the description now in this video we are going to actually talk about a new service called Astro Relay. Now this service has really some cool features and that's why I decided to make a video on this service. Okay. Now using this service also you can actually access different ports of your Raspberry Pi over the internet. And if you are using it for a project or maybe an experiment it's still it's free for you. You don't need to pay anything. And if you are going to use it for commercial purposes in that case depending on your usage you may have to pay something. Okay. Now let's just see how you can actually, so at first we will see how to set up Astro Relay or Raspberry Pi and then we will see how you can actually access different ports in the Pi. Now here we will do two things, at first we will see how you can access the SSH terminal of your Pi over the internet and then we will see if you do live video surveillance in your Pi, how you can access the live footage over the internet. Okay, and using the, like in that way you can do it for any other service you want to do. Okay, so let's get started. Okay guys, so the first thing is you have to go to the official site of Astro Relay which is www.astrorelay.com Now the link will be in the description There you need to create an account at first Now I already have an account so here I will just log in into it So you will get a form like this, you need to fill that up but here I will just sign up uh, sorry sign in and then after you will create your account this is how it will look like they will ask you to create a domain so you just click in a domain setup now here you need to give it a name so here i will give, give i will give it like sparklers uh, deep makers this is the name i am giving you can give any name you want uh and here you have to select a domain so i will just select arlab1.cc and the server i will see at us west you can select any of them and then you confirm and then it will create a domain for you so basically using this domain you are going to control your all the different ports okay so now it has successfully created the domain for us now we need to create an agent so now you just give it a name so here i'll give it pi zero because here i'm using a raspberry pi zero you can use any other raspberry pi so basically you can use this service in pi three four zero or any other pi you want Location I'll give India, the domain I'll select that one I have created. You can use more than one domain also if you want. And then I'll just confirm. Now the agent has been created. You click next here. Then it will basically start the agent for you. And after you start the agent, you need to select the OS. So either a router or Linux Raspberry Pi or Windows. Here we are going to use Raspberry Pi. You select that one. Then you need to download this file, ARC client and configuration file. You actually need to run this file in your Raspberry Pi. So what you can do you can simply like click here uh, you can actually like copy the link and then you can download it uh, download this in raspberry pi and yeah and if you're using like your uh, raspberry pi in your desktop you can download it directly uh, but what i can what i'm doing here i'm just downloading it in my pc computer like in my windows system and then i will just transfer it or you can say copy it in my raspberry pi so let me just copy this so i just paste it here and yeah so here i think i have this file now i'll just extract it here extract files i'll just extract it in my desktop yeah see and yeah i have extracted that now i'll just transfer it to raspberry pi for then i'm using filezilla so if you don't know how to use files that transfer files i have a separate video on that you can watch it on my channel the link will be in the description here i just need to give my raspberry pi id username and password and here i have just get into my i have just no i am inside my pi now here i will just go to my desktop 
or uh, okay no i'll just i'll just be in my home in my raspberry pi and here i'll just copy the file i'll just upload it i am uploading the whole arc folder now let's see what inside the arc folder we what we have so if we just go to desktop and if we just go to arc you will see there are two folders linux and raspberry pi you go raspberry pi you see there are three files and basically we only need these three files you know raspberry pi but i have just copied the whole arc folder now we will get into our raspberry pi i am using putty you can use bnc or that is my connection whatever you want so now i am inside my pi so the next thing we need to really do is we need to um yeah we need to go to the folder so i will go to arc and then we go inside raspberry pi now we have these three files we need to give execute uh, executable permissions to the uh, arc file so chmod plus x and then this uh, sorry then arc and now we can simply run the arc file and we are done this is all we need to do okay and here if you get any error you, so first thing is you don't need to install any libraries for it but if you get any error by chance you just do app get update and app get upgrade so sudo app get upgrade and sudo app get upgrade so uh, after that like there will be no like errors okay so here i am using the latest version of raspberry pi os okay and uh, you can so basically uh, if you if you are using any like older os also it should work very fine but if it is still not working you just update it and it will work just fine okay okay so now we have downloaded the irc file we have run that now we just click finish here now yes as you can see our agent has been created it has been connected so it's totally fine now we'll create a link so like i said at first we will create a ssh link to like to get the ssh access in our raspberry pi in the destination host ip we need to give the ip where our raspberry pi is connected so what that means is so if your raspberry pi is connected to a router which ip your router has assigned to the pi now, if you don't know like which IP your router has been assigned, the simplest way to get it is you just go inside your Pi. You can also see it from your routers page, but uh, you can also get your get into your Pi and you get I C F I F config, and you will get it 192.168.0.105 here. So you just write that thing here. Okay. Now you may ask like, what if this IP get changed every time? So the simplest answer is you can always fix the IP. So if you just go to your router's page or like whatever you are using for internet access, if you just go there uh, in my router in the LAN setup, I have this reservation uh, DHCP option where I can reserve a IP address for one of my devices. So here I have reversed the IP 192.168.0.105 for my for this MAC address, which is my Raspberry Pi's MAC address. You can do something like this so that every time you will get the same IP. So here I have given that IP. Now destination port number will touch to. The service we are using is SSH, and I am going to use this TCP protocol. And you just click here confirm. And within very few seconds, our SSH link will be created, and then we will just try if it is working or not. Okay. Okay, so it has been created successfully, as you can see here. Now to access it, simply you click in the SSH. Here you have the host name and port number. Now again, I will use Putty, and I am going to use this uh, host name rather than the IP. So I will just click here, and the port number I will use is this one. Okay. Now you may say I am still using the same network. Yes, I am using, but uh, like I will also show you using a different network too. So don't worry about that. Okay. So now here we are trying with this one. As you can see, we already are getting the connection. Now I am giving the username, password, and now we are inside our Pi using the host and port number given by our SOD link. And now if you see, uh, we can do whatever we want. So there is a little bit delay. Now the delay also depends on the, your, the speed of your internet connection, but still there will be some delay because uh, obviously, this connection is over the internet, so it is going to the SOD the server and from the server to your Pi. Uh, so yeah, there will be a little bit of delay, but this works just fine. Okay, no problem here. And also, we can use any of the commands we want here. And as you can see, it's not that slow. Okay, working just fine. Okay, now let's just use another service. So like I said, I'm going to use a live video server and service, and I will show you with a different network too. 
now at first what i will do i will turn on a live video surveillance so for that i am going to use my rpi cam web interface now if you don't know what this is totally it's totally fine i'll make a separate video on this live video surveillance thing so here i am turning on the service i have connected a raspberry pi camera with it now if you see if i just create like if i just write 192.168.0.105 which is my local ip with the port number 80 I will get this page where I can actually access the camera and you see this is my hand I'm moving so it's working just fine okay now let's just add this service in our app store relay so, so same way name maybe we can give it any name so let's say video obviously not the best name but yeah this will work just fine the IP address uh, which is 192.6.0.5 for me the destination port is 80 this time service is obviously HTTP and finally here I'm going to use this again. Okay, but you can use different protocol also. So divine. Okay, so now it's we are creating this video link, and after that we get a link, and using that link we can we can actually access that video from anywhere in the world. So now we have created the link, and if we just create open the link, as you can see, we can access the video footage. Okay, obviously there will be a little bit of delay. And as you can see, we can access it. And still, you can, I think you can see my hand with a little bit of delay. And yeah. Okay. Now, the thing we need to see that if it is still working with a different network. So, here, as you can see, I am connected with Anonymous. This is the router my Raspberry Pi is connected to. Now, I will change with this uh, hotspot. So, this is my Android, so Android device hotspot. And I'll just connect with it. So, I'll be in a different network. And let me just connect to it. Okay, so now we have connected to a different network and now to prove that I am in a different network, let's just open that same IP 192.0.105 with the uh, port number 80 and now if you just see nothing is opening at all because we are no more in the same plan, so it's not going to work. Now let's just try with this link which is like our Astrodela link and see and as you can see here it is still working because it is like over the internet and we can access it from any network so as you can see it is still working and with the same speed as previous one it is working just fine okay so and also if you just try the ssh one we can actually see that the ssh is working or not so it should work just fine but still let's see so here we have copied it and oh actually we okay let me just reconnect it so that you will see okay so now we are in set 40 and I'm, I have written the link and it's, we have to copy the port number 2. So let me just copy it and now just try to open it and uh, let's wait. And as you can see we are getting the connection. So that means it is working just fine. And as you can see it is working just fine okay okay another thing uh you may say that okay now it is working fine but if it's like that that every time we want to do this we need to run that file like that uh, uh what the name was arc file so the answer is yes you need to do that but there is a simple solution which is uh, you can add that file in your startup programs or startup like scripts in that case every time your file will boot up uh, that file will get executed automatically so you don't need to run it every time now if you ask how you can do that i will say like i have a separate video on that so if you go to my channel i uh, okay so my startup i think i have a video on that so if you see um, yes okay not on this one so i have a video actually on this one uh, let me see so yeah yeah as you can see here learn any program in raspberry pi and startup so i have a separate video on this the link will be in the description so you can just watch that video and follow the steps and then you will be able to run this file automatically at the boot up of like when your file boot okay so in this way you don't need to execute it every time and you will always have the like doesn't matter whatever whatever you are you can just access your raspberry pi every every time okay from everywhere okay now the thing is that uh, let's just talk about like uh, about the pricing so if it's free or not and things like that so the first thing is if you're using for an iot project small project or small experiment anything like that is free for you because 
Uh, if you see the payment, uh, if you just go to the payment part, you will see uh, I have used 2.67 MB of 1 GB. So it will give you 1 GB of data for free. And uh, if you are using it for IoT things and things like that, 1 GB is really enough. Uh, yes, but if you are doing using it for video server and things like that, 1 GB will not be enough for like maybe one month or two months. So in that case, you need to buy some data. Uh, also for like if you want to use it for like in regular but so regularly if you want to use that also you need to buy some data but it's not that uh, expensive it's pretty cheap so you can simply buy that but the best part is uh, there is no limitation of number of devices you can use it any number of devices uh, you want even for the 1 GB also uh, the free 1 GB you can use any number of devices so if you have let's say 10 devices in your home you can just access 10 devices okay and it will just fine so let's just turn this thing off and uh, so yeah this is all about uh, i think this service and yeah, so this service is still in its beta condition so the developers are like improving it so you may get some like more cool features after some months okay so this is all about this video i think and uh, if you want to know anything more about this uh as for delay you can always like comment uh on the video or you can mail me uh okay so i will give you the answer and uh, so if you like this kind of videos, let me know. So I will make more of this kind of video services related as with time. And I am also working on many more projects. So the projects will come very soon, guys. So stay tuned in the channel and subscribe to the channel. And if you have enjoyed this video, like this video. So yeah, that's it. And I will see you in the next video.